Welcome to the Idle Framework updated course from Cyberry IT. My name is Daniel Riley. I'm your subject matter expert on the Idle Framework. In this video, we're going to be discussing our first set of KPIs for service strategy. Um, but before we start on that, I'd like to cover a topic which is very important to keep in mind whenever you're talking about uh, measuring performance indicators. Um, and that topic is Goodhart's Law. It's pictured here in kind of a funny way, but it's important to realize what's happening. So Goodhart's Law states when a measure becomes a target, it ceases to be a good measure. And what that means is through good intentions, you may set a way to measure uh, quantitatively how close to achieving your goal is. So if you give somebody a task and measure them on, say, the number of nails that they were able to produce, then you might get th thousands of tiny nails which don't really fit your process. So then you might say, okay, well, let's change it to the weight of the nails. Well, then you might get nails that are too big and use too much material. And again, they're not really fit for your process. So this is generally called the Cobra effect or the law of unintended consequences um, due to a story that's related. The Indian government wanted to reduce the number of Cobras in the wild, and therefore they released a bounty on captured and dead cobras. Uh, they later found out that people were starting to raise cobras um, to turn in the bodies for the reward, uh, and so they canceled the program, and the people who were raising the cobras then released them into the wild, and in effect, they actually increased the population uh, rather than decreasing it. So it's an unintended consequence of a, a best laid decision. So there are ways that you can check for this in your data over time using statistical methods. Now those are about uh, a bit outside of the coursework that we're going to do, but if you're interested, you can uh, do a little more research on checking for Goodhart's Law. The key thing that we're going to want to remember is not to tie our KPIs uh, to our performance incentives. And the reason is because then you make them a target and people will start to take advantage of them. They'll cease to be a good measure of the performance. So now that we have that out of the way, let's actually discuss what it is we'll be measuring. So this one, the SIC is what I call it. It's the number of strategic initiatives that were launched through the service portfolio management process. Um, so each cycle of process release that we do today, um, through continuous delivery, you'll still have a, a delivery cycle. And in that, we will measure the number of services that we released, which have a strategic plan attached. Of that, we're going to take a look at a percentage of those services that were planned prior to the number that we implement them. So as a percentage, we're going to take the number of new services with a plan, and we're going to divide that by the total number of new services. And this is a constrained percentage that's going to be in the range between zero, some number, and that number is less than one. Um, this percentage is uh, the PAS. This is the new services that were launched without the strategic review. Uh, this is the inverse of the PNS. And if you take these two numbers and you sum them, they should always equal one. So again, this is going to be the number of unplanned services divided by the total number of new services. Uh, and again, this is a constrained percentage that's somewhere between zero and one. We're going to keep account of the number of new customers. And now you could argue that this uh, KPI falls under business relationship management or um, several other life cycle phases as well. Uh, and you'd be correct. A lot of these will have effect throughout. And that's why they're in service strategy, uh, because that is the core and it informs all of our phases going forward. And we're going to keep account of the number of customers lost for the same reasoning. Uh, now, number of incidents responded to, um, this is actually a total category. There are several different types of incidents, and you may want to break this out uh, to determine like customer incidences versus security incidences and things like that. Now, when you're talking about measuring KPIs, you're most likely going to see them in a form of a dashboard. And this is just an example of a dashboard uh, for measuring 
different KPIs in one place. You have some financial um, and some trending data here. So we're also going to look at, for the financial management aspect, uh, the percentage of overspending that's on the IT budget. And this is for all IT services total. Um, the percent of overspend, I call it the OSP. And this is going to be a monetary amount, the money spent on IT divided by the approved budget. Now this is not a constrained ratio. So we're going to also look at the percents of services on a standardized budget plan. So if you look at the number of services you have, uh, very similar to how many had a strategic review prior to being implemented, this looks at how many were given a standardized budget plan um, and the financial department has approved. Now this is a constrained percentage. Um, it's going to be the number of budgeted services over the number of total services. And again, it's constrained between zero and one. Now the percent of services projects uh, with a cost benefit analysis um, is another form uh, of financial planning wherein you measure the expected cost of delivering services versus the monetary or uh, quantitative gains of the of, of implementing it and then you would attach this on a, a per project or per service basis and this is going to be the number of projects with a cost benefit analysis divided by the total number of projects or services um, and this is again a constraint between zero and one so we're going to look at the percent of services with post implementation reviews um, once we move through the transition phase and we're in service operation um, it is best practice to perform a post implementation review um, just to talk about what's gone correct and what has uh, what could be improved in the future um, so this is going to be the number of services that you have a post implementation review on divided by the total number of services and this is again a constrained uh, percentage somewhere in the zero to one value where one of course represents 100 percent of your services have a post implementation review attached uh, percent of services with overspend um, this is a per service measure of the IT budget overspend so you're going to take the dollar amount spent on a service divided by the dollar amount budgeted to deliver that service and you will get a not constrained number. So you could get somewhere, um, you know, double spending on your budget, and that would show up as a number like 2.0. Um, of course, you don't want to be double spending on your budget, uh, but the math won't constrain it. So the percent of cost optimization plans for services, um, this is the number of cost optimized services, uh, which generally comes again in the operational phase. Uh, the accounting management will propose optimizations uh, for expenses uh, and this is a constrained metric so some percentage of the number of services will have a cost, op cost optimization plan uh, and some other percentage will not. Now moving into the business relationship management KPIs uh, we're going to want to keep account of the received customer complaints uh, and this will generally come through in the form of a help desk um, and then we're going to take that and we're going to have an account of the accepted customer complaints um, and we can keep a ratio of the number of complaints to the number of accepted complaints then we're going to keep account of the customer satisfaction surveys that we have sent out and we're going to want to take a percentage of those return surveys uh, so that we can monitor uh, how many of our, our requests for information are being fulfilled. We're going to take the count of the surveys that we've got and we're going to divide that by the total services out, uh, satisfaction surveys out. Uh, and this is again a constrained percentage between zero and one where one means all of your surveys have been responded to and zero of course means none. So the mean customer satisfaction per service takes 
the services listed and the customer satisfaction survey and uh, applies the mean uh, which is to sum up all of the answers and then divide by the number of answers uh, that you've received. So this is the average measured customer satisfaction for each service um, and you would want to include the standard deviation so that you can tell how many are clustered around the mean versus how distributed uh, the opinions of your customers might be. And of course, this is all done by self-reporting on customer satisfaction surveys. Uh, so you do have to take it with a bit of uh, a grain of salt. And this is again an example of a business relationship management dashboard. Um, this will generally be hosted inside of your uh, help desk software so that you can tie it to the rest of your ticketing system. With that, we've come to the end of this video. I'd like to thank you for watching. And as always, if you have any questions, you can contact me on cybrary.it. My username is twarter, T-W-A-R-T-E-R. 